Welcome back, my Alpha Squad, to another episode of Cell to Singularity, Evolution Never Ends. The game I'm milking harder than any company milks a cow. Because, dang, I've made a lot of video videos on this game. <laughs> but, since last time, I have bought quite a lot amongst the upgrades so everything's up to 31 now and here everything's up to 29 at least which means we did unlock quite a few rewards so let's go through them ramblin man during the majority of the early stone age people were hunter gatherers and lived in pneumatic societies Following the migration routines of animals and traveling to wherever the next available source of food was located. That was obviously until we learned we can quarantine animals and have, well, provide food for them so they do not need to travel vast distances to find food and not potentially starve. And in exchange, we breed them and, well, eat them as we normally would have. Temple of Doom. The world's oldest freestanding structure is the new lithic temple of Ganch Kantija in Gozo, Malta. Did I pronounce that correctly? Kantija. Hope so. Bronze metal. The earliest known uh, seafaring vessel is the Dover Bronze Age boat. A boat discovered in the UK that dates back to the 1500s before Christ and is thought to be the oldest intact boat in the world. Well, before that, boats would have been from like reeds or wood or stuff like that so I don't think any of those would stay intact because wood does not fossilize all that well it tends to rot and turn well turn back into compost that feeds into the ground and provides nutrients for other plants so obviously a metal boat will fossilize well not fossilize but survive the age of time <laughs> Metal from the sky. Evidence has been found that the ancient Egyptians forged items using meteoric iron, which they may have seen as a gift from celestial gods. Isn't the iron just iron, whether or not it comes from earth or the sky? I don't know. Happy as a pig in clay. The phrase piggy bank comes from an old English word pig, which referred to a type of clay used to make jars that would be used to hold coins. That's actually kind of, that's very interesting. Cornucopia. Many of the crops that we eat regularly today originated in the new world and were only introduced to Europe after its discovery, such as corn, tomatoes, potatoes, tobacco, rubber and cacao or if you really want to tomato potato right tomatoes potatoes tobacco ruber and i don't know how, how, how like how how else would you pronounce cacao cacao i don't know the leg Bones connected to the, oh, the leg bones connected to the pelvic bone. Yes, one of the first people to perform human dissection to gain a better understanding of human anatomy was the Flemish scientist Andreas Vesalius. His book, 
De humani corporis fabrica, on the fabric of the human body, is one of the first accurate books on human anatomy. So he was the first person to cut up a human for science. But who was the first person to cut up a human, period? I mean, like, cannibalism must date back to, well, since humans existed, I would presume. Especially in rough winter times when no other food could be discovered. That horrific th thought aside, population boom. One of the biggest uh, changes of the, industri the industrial age was the migration of populations from the country to cities. By 1900, urban populations had increased from housing only 15% of all people to 85%. Well, that's a complete literal 180 because, you know, 100% minus 15 is 85, so... Fashion forward. Wearing black was extremely popular in English cities during the industrial age because the air was so polluted from soot and other factory byproducts that it created a thick constant constant smog that would stain clothing ooh smog is like thick smoke that's almost just as uh, humidity as rain so i can imagine that would seep into your clothes and stain everything that's actually kind of really bad Kaboom! The bikini swimsuit was named after Bikini Atoll, site of the first public test of a nuclear bomb, which had occurred only four days before the swimsuit was released. Correlation is not causation or relation. <laughs> they have nothing to do with each other. Well, I guess the bikini was the second big boom on that occasion. H.G. <laughs> Wells' 1914 novel, The World Set Free, Children of the Atom, proposed a future where scientists discover limitless energy locked within atoms and use it to build weapons, 30 years before scientists would actually learn how to split the atom. Seriously, you don't how, know how to split a pair? Just tell the one the other one cheated. It's as simple as that. Pining for the fjords. Finland was the first country to make internet access a legal right as of 2010. Why can't every country do that? I mean like especially in South Africa. In South Africa, sorry, my tongue went numb there. South Africa has one of the most expensive internet um, services in the world. I would, I would like to have the legal right for internet access. And I know there's a whole lot of other people in South Africa that would also love the right to have internet access. Basically free internet. Bugging out. The term computer bug was coined in 1945 by programmer and naval officer Rear Admiral Grace Hopper. Grace. As far as I well, know, well, in my experience, I've never met a male Grace. So it, was t it was coined by a woman. Oh, I assume, but assuming is not the right thing to do. Either way, I've never met a man named Grace, so I'm assuming that not invented by men. Gaming the system. The earliest example of a video game comes from 1947, a cathode ray tube amusement device that allowed the user to simulate a missile being fired at targets. You mean space invaders? I thought the I thought the first video game was Pong. Huh, apparently I was thought wrong. But 
cathode ray tube amusement device. So, it cathode ray tubes, they light up like from bottom to top. So I can imagine that looks kind of like something being fired. So that would be interesting and just be like 99 luft balance. Luft balance. The earliest reported use of an unmanned aerial vehicle or drone for combat occurred in 1849 when Austrian forces holding Venice under siege attacked the city with incendiary balloons. Well, how did they, like, there's so many factors that you would have to take into account with that. Because wind... What if the wind changed and blew the balloons back in your own face? What then? Just saying. The weather is unpredictable and it might just decide to screw you over. Tales from the cryptocurrency. As of, as of December 2017, there were more than... 1,300 recorded cryptocurrencies that were available for international investors to buy. Seems Dogecoin has a lot of competition. Leave the nanometer running. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter, obviously nano about the same size as a standard strand of DNA and invisible to the naked human eye. Now why is your eye naked? Get some clothes, pervert. Mars is for soccer moms. <laughs> oh, this must be good. While it is hard to tell from pictures, the Curiosity rover is actually 10 feet long, 7 feet high, and 9 feet wide, about the size of a small SUV. No wonder one of the movies about Mars is Mars Needs Moms. They need someone to drive this soccer mom van. Lost in space. Of the 43 missions to send landing rovers to Mars since 1960, 25 have failed. But did they like miss, like hit and a miss, or are they floating between Earth and Mars, or what happened to them? Or do we just not know? They just disappear. I mean, like, seriously. Space is pretty big. If you lose something there, then it's pretty gone. Almost like when you lose something in a woman's purse. Meteorites on Mars. In 2005, the Opportunity rover found an iron meteorite on the surface of Mars. This is the first ever meteorite identified on the surface of another planet. Well, it's not like we can exactly send rovers and stuff to Venus or something because it's kind of hot over there. Marathon Runner. The Opportunity rover has traveled over 40 kilometers across the surface of Mars and is thus the rover that has traveled the longest off-world distance. Is it just me or does that also sound like not a lot to you, the rest of you? Like, I feel like that doesn't sound like a lot, but I guess it is a lot since it has to analyze every freaking inch it moves it moves or I don't know. How big of an area does it scan and analyze and do stuff in at a time? Let's say it's a well, square meter, so that is about well, 40 kilometers is then actually quite a lot. Because how long would it take to analyze, scan, and dig around in a square meter each time? Reach for the stars, and if you miss, you'll hit nothing. Mars is there, waiting to be reached. Buzz Aldrin. Very inspirational, Buzz but we prefer light years. 
Red Rover, Red Rover, come over. Mars tugs at the human imagination like no other planet. With a force mightier than gravity, it attracts the eye to the shimmering red presence in the clear night sky. John Noble Wilford. That's very poetic of you, John. Viking Exploration. The Viking lander on Mars is a toy grown to large size. A metaphor of a dream. That dream of extending our will, our hand, our seeing eye to another world. It's not a machine. It is us. Ray Bradbury. Ray, were you high when you thought of this? Cause, and maybe reading up on uh, North mythology. Because, yeah. Very philosophical of you. Dust in the wind. Of all the planets in our solar system, Mars experiences the largest and most violent dust storms due to the unique elliptical shape of its orbit around the sun. Well then, there's quite a few people from Earth that will not be able to ever go to Mars because one, on, one storm and boom, they wiped out half the crew. He's got a point. It's not going to do any good to land on Mars if we're stupid. Ray Bradbury. What's with the insults? There, the air up there. Mars has a very thin atmosphere. Again, my tongue. Eh. The atmospheric pressure on Mars is equal to only 1% of that found at Earth's sea level. Yeah, that's not a lot of pascals. Anyone got a, a like a bike pump we can take? Just like choo, choo, choo. fill it up. Warmonger. The planet Mars is named after the Roman god of war, also known as Ares by the ancient Greek Greeks. Sorry, girl. Well. Do they predict war on Mars? And I already made two movie references in one video. <laughs> Inaccurate information. The ancient Greeks thought that Earth was the center of the universe and Mars was one of five stars that revolved around it. Well, that's a pretty dull star if it was one. Ashes to ashes, rust to dust. Uh, kind of feels like someone has played around with oxidization. Mars red, Mars's red color is due to the presence of iron oxide on the planet's surface. The planet is literally comprised of rust dust. Wait, is iron magnetic or no? Forgot. See, this is why you should um really use that long-term memory when you learn stuff in school because <laughs> short-term ain't helping no one <laughs> this is quite a reward filled episode so far and I don't think we have enough money or entropy or ideas to reach for another reward right now wait unless now, 290 won't give us another reward, but 200 might. Well, that was a waste. Let's unlock some of these Martian... Martian-born adaptability. Oh, wait, I want to read that. Martian-born adaptability. The first children born and raised in space are different from their parents, evolving, in, evolving to thrive in the Martian environment. The subtle but important changes signify a new branch of human evolution that is beginning to sprout. Like I said in last episode, like since Mars is basically a third of Earth's size and a third of Earth's gravity, I kind of think people will be a third of Earth's average size. 
Ooh. I I wanted to make a joke there, but I it, it's not a good joke. It's it's a very it's a very bad joke, so <laughs> I'm rather not gonna do that. Phobos Space Elevator. Transit between Earth and Mars is now faster than ever before. People can now communicate commute to New York City in the morning and be home in the shadow of Olympus Mons in time for dinner. Oh yeah, I, re I went back and searched up Olympus Mons. It's like the largest mountain on Mars and it's really freaking tall. But also very flat, so you won't really notice it unless you look from very, very far away. I really don't like. I need more explanation on this elevator because traveling from Earth to Mars within within a day seems very, very far fetched to me. Unless you somehow sink Mars and Earth's orbits, there's no permanent structure you can make. Just, I'm just saying it. It, it I. See, this is why you have people that invent things and people that play games. Because <laughs> I do not have a creative enough mind to think of a way to sink two planets' rotation around the sun. Like, I don't think we can be build something strong enough to do that. Terraform, like in Terra Genesis. Check out that video. It's very educational, like this one. Working with real-ish science to try and terraform Mars to look like Earth. After all the years we've spent trying to make Mars more like Earth, this is the final step. Changing the very planet at its most basic compositional elements. Uh, like nuking Mars to create an atmosphere and melt the polar off the poles to create water on Mars. Yeah, we're so good at global warming at this point, we might as well just do it on, on another planet as well. Orbital greenhouse heating. I feel like they are, are going to tell you what I just told you. The first step to terraforming is raising the temperature to make Mars warmer. Getting the climate of Mars to increase will make agriculture more viable. I feel like we need to heat it up. Yeah, like I said, global warming. We're kind of the same thing, but... Greenhouse gases require an atmosphere and an ozone layer to work. Like, Mars, 1% of Earth, it's gonna be a little bit difficult at, at this stage. International Space Station, or the ISS, launched in 1998. Hey, one year before I was born. Couldn't you have waited a year? Then we, I, I would have a significant connection. The International Space Station is a vessel orbiting the Earth where astronauts from all over the world can work together to study and learn more about space. One of the few places related to Earth where people actually work together. Social media. Which you should follow me on. I do have an Instagram. I do have Discord. I do have Twitter. I won't even mention Facebook because no one uses that. You could follow me there. I mostly just post uh, post photos about well the thumbnails when I upload. But on Twitter, I might I don't know, react to a tweet if someone actually tweeted at me. With the age of the well, on the Discord, we all have fun there, so you guys know what to do, and gals and non-binary. Whatever your preference, whatever you choose to be, whatever your pronoun, everyone's safe in the Discord. With the age of the internet, social networks are able to connect people from all over the world in real time, creating new possibilities for mass communication. There's not a lot of mass in the Discord right now. 
still very minute community. I mean, the channel is 81 squad members strong, and that is mind blowing for me. I know there's channels with millions of people, but for me, every subscriber I gain at this stage, it's like it excites me when people subscribe. It's like every single subscription excites me. Just the growing has been really fast the last while and I enjoy it very much. I'm getting off topic. <laughs> well, kind of not since we did cover social media right now. I should check out their Jurassic um, area again. Or I can unlock this. Use MetaBits to update the simulation and fix this glitch. I always forget how loud that is. Okay. I fixed the glitch. I hope. Where is that glitch? Normally glitch. Use MetaBits to fix the glitch. Error simulation cannot visualize the object. But I thought we fixed the glitch. Or do you think it was the marsupials? Or did we cover mars marsupials already? Let me just check if there's anything new on this list. I don't see anything. What was the point of fixing a glitch if, if it didn't get fixed? Marsupials are mammals that give birth to live young at an early stage of development. The young stay for a time in a pouch on the mother's abdomen where they remain until they have grown enough to become independent. Kangaroos are marsupials as well. Short pregnancy. Marsupials only gestate for four to five weeks before being born. Dang, that's fast. They climb into pouches in their mother's underside where they latch onto a nipple and feed until they have developed enough to emerge. Wait, wait, wait. So they basically have two wombs. Like, I know that's a very oversimplification, but they basically get out of the one and get into the next one and be like, you know what, I'm going to stay here until I'm old enough to go off on my own. Four molars, whereas placental mammals have only three molars, many marsupials have four. Placental? Now we can unlock the marsupials, I think. Should be here somewhere. Yeah, here it is. Oh my word, that is so freaking cute we just got the best reward in the game looking at that cute koala let's upgrade did not mean to go past 31 oops Abdominal pouch. Marsupials are born very early in their gestation. This makes them vulnerable. Female marsupials have a pouch on their abdomen where their young can grow safely until they are old enough to become independent. North, North American possum. Hey, doesn't look too bad. It's also kind of cute. Either way, we kind of wanted to read that. The only marsupials north of the equator, uh, opossums, are furry cat-sized omnivores. They are semi-arboreal, semi prey on pest insects like ticks and are naturally immune to rabies. Wait, so uh, opossum can't get rabies. That's something you wouldn't expect from a wild animal. Diaprotodonts. Diaprotodonts. 
Marsupials have 40 to 50 teeth, many more than placental mammals, including up to 10 incisors and 4 molars. They also do not replace their teeth as often as placental mammals, which usually have two full sets in their lifetime. Kangaroo! We're unlocking all the rewards today. I mean, we got Joey, we got everything. Either way. Known for their large, powerful hind legs, almost like the ostrich, kangaroos are the national symbol of Australia and are native only to that continent and New Guinea. They are herbivores. Oh, they are her herbivorous and can hop up to 40 kilometers per hour. Wait a minute. Just want to quickly check something. I believe ostriches can also get up to that speed. Ostrich top speed. Never mind, ostriches are way better. They get up to 70 kilometers per hour. Dang! Ostriches beat the kangaroos. The koala. The cutest Satan marsupial ever. Despite their colloquial name, koalas are actually not bears, but are tree dwelling marsupials found in the eucalyptus forest of Australia. They spend most of their days eating and sleeping there. Oh. Don't we all wish we <laughs> could do that, just eat and sleep all day. Uh, they have few natural predators, but their habitat is threatened by deforestation and bushfires. Yes. Monarchs and marsupials. Marsupials are endemic to Australia and the Americas. Europeans did not encounter marsupials until Christopher Columbus's voyage voyages to Central America in the 1400s when a common opossum was brought back to Spain and presented to the baffled king and queen. I think you'd be baffled if you've never seen an animal hide inside another animal before. Pouch potato. Marsupial pregnancies are very short, lasting for from only 12 days to 5 weeks. Marsupial infants, known as joeys, are born in a nearly fetal state and are blind, hairless, and around the size of a jelly bean at birth. If they're around the size of the jelly bean, I can't think the birth would be that difficult, actually. Actually, now I'm thinking of Rufus from Kim Possible. That thing also kind of looks like a jelly, jelly bean, that naked mole rat. Hopping mad. The red kangaroo is the largest species of marsupial. They can weigh as much as 200 pounds. They have powerful tendons in their hind legs that allow them to hop as fast as 40 miles per hour and as high as 10 feet in the air. Should freaking get them to play basketball and deliver powerful kicks in a fight. Yeah, anyone that does like Kung Fu or something, you think your kicks are strong, let this just go up against this kangaroo. It will kick you and you will fly through that freaking dojo wall. No disrespect to Kung Fu, but I mean... Animals just tend to be stronger than humans in... Well, when they're our size and bigger than us. Impossible. Oh, the puns. Oh, my word. The Virginia opossum is the most common marsupial in North America. These tough creatures are highly resistant to snake venom, immune to rabies, and are common in urban environments, where they often scavenge through trash and pet food. You know what? If they're immune to rabies, they might make a better pet than some people's um, rabbit dogs or cats just saying the trunk of the elephant we do not have enough entropy for that I feel like this was a good reward filled episode so 
If you liked the video, don't forget to leave a like. If you're not part of the Alpha Squad already, why not? It's an awesome squad to be a part of. And we have been growing quite a lot the last while. So just subscribe, join the Discord. We all have fun there. And I'll see everyone next time.